Thanks for choosing this free Anfield Index podcast. If you'd prefer to listen to this or any of our other shows without adverts, then now's the time to check out Anfield Index Pro. With AI Pro, you can supercharge your entire listening experience. You'll not only get all of our podcasts without the ads, but you'll have them far faster with our quick publish feature available exclusively for subscribers. AI Pro also puts you in the heart of our sound studio, with an option to listen to many of our shows live and interact with the podcasters in real time as the shows are recording. Upgrading couldn't be easier. AI Pro is available on all popular podcast platforms, and we have our own apps for Apple and Android. Just head on over to AnfieldIndexPro.com and get started today. Hello and welcome to the Daily Red, your lunchtime catch-up on all things Liverpool FC. On a Thursday, two days before Liverpool return to action against Brighton and Hove Albion at Anfield in a 3pm kickoff on Saturday. This will be Liverpool's first league game in almost a month, which is quite unusual, obviously. The cancellations of games against Wolves and then Chelsea due to the passing of the Queen and then the international break has just made it a long time since we saw Liverpool play. And hopefully... Hopefully that time away has gotten some heads right, made certain players realise that they need to do a bit more, and shaken off the cobwebs from a few who seem to just have been, you know, put in storage in the summer and not really taken back out properly, maybe not given enough time to thaw out during the summer. Uh, Liverpool have received a double injury boost with duo back on grass. Those two players would be Calvin Ramsey and Curtis Jones, both of them now back in training. Ramsey missed all of preseason, so you'd imagine it's going to be a slow workup for him. And then with Curtis Jones, he was involved in preseason, came on in the Community Shield for about 60 seconds, was due to play the following day in the friendly at Anfield, arrived to play left in a space boot without playing and it has been described as a stress reaction to a bone around the tibia now all i can think of that it's a stress fracture um but it looks like curtis is able to start ramping things back up as well which is is positive news because obviously there is that gaping hole on the right side of liverpool's midfield and in theory curtis is a really good fit to play that role if he can put it all together. We know he has the talent. We know he has the physicality. We know he has the work rate. The decision-making is an issue, but that's the same for most 21-year-olds. But he lost a lot of last season when he really could have made that position his own. Henderson was playing really poorly. Elliot was injured. We were using Naby and Thiago together in one position. One would play, then the other would play. And there was an opportunity last season for Curtis. But he missed two and a bit months with the eye injury. He had COVID. He had an ankle problem. Just a really bad stop-start season that never got underway for him. And this has been the same, obviously. His season still hasn't got going. And it's been two months since this injury flared up. So you'd hope that he has passed the worst of it and he can start to build himself back up. Um, Cuevin Kelleher, his situation remains unclear. Andy Robertson will miss the Brighton game, so Costa Simicus almost certain to start. Naby Keita, Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain and Cade Gordon also out for varying reasons. Um, Ibu Kanate is back. Henderson obviously went and played his five minutes for England. Uh, so he is fit to be selected. So we should have a stronger squad for this game than we've had for any of the previous games, but we're still quite a way away from getting everybody fit and firing. Um, less positive news. Alex Oxley chamberlains house was burgled while he was inside with his family on Tuesday evening. 
Uh, he lives lives in Wilmslow, which is near Manchester, with his partner Perry Edwards and their son. I can't believe his son is already 13 months old. Seems like he was only born a few weeks ago. Um, but yeah, nobody was harmed. Jewelry and handbags were stolen. And Cheshire police are investigating the incident. So at least everybody was okay. At least there was nobody hurt and everybody is is safe. That is the, the most important thing. There's obviously been a bit of a spate of burglaries of Premier League footballers in the Manchester region over the last 12 months. Both Jao Kinsale and Victor Lindelof um, have had their houses broken into as well, which just should never happen. Um, what else do we have? Liverpool FC top 10 centre-backs, Hanson, Hippie, Hughes and more. Fallon Hansen's not number one. I'm immediately going to send Henry Jackson a mean message on social media. Um, I'm not. Well, I am. I am. Uh, number 10, Alec Raisbeck. 341 appearances. Two-time title winner in 1901 and 1906. Also won a second division title in 1905. What a mad time that was for football. Liverpool win a title in 01 get relegated in 03 or 04, win the second division, and then win the first division straight away. Uh, Mark Lawrenson in ninth. Uh, just to be clear, Mark Lawrenson, the reason you were let go from the BBC wasn't because you were 65-year-old white male. It was because you're really boring. Uh, Phil Thompson, number eight, absolutely outstanding for us for many, many years. Jamie Carragher, seventh. That's too high. Mark Lawrence and Phil Thompson were both significantly better than Cara. Uh, Sammy Hippie is sixth. No argument there. Emlyn Hughes, fifth. One of the all-time greats. Probably should be higher, to be fair. He probably should be higher. Now, Crazy Horse did play in a bunch of different positions. But I would say he should be higher. Tommy Smith in fourth. I would have Hughes above him. Ron Yates in third. I would have Emlyn Hughes above him as well. Uh, number two, Virgil van Dijk. And number one is Alan Hansen. So Henry's DMs remain safe. Yeah, I would say Hansen one. Van Dijk two. Yates. No, Hughes three. Yates four. Smith five. Hippie is six, Thompson seven, Lawrence and eight, Carragher nine. Now, none of us saw uh, Alex Raisbeck play. I would, I would put Daniel Agger in the ten best centre backs that I have seen. Now, I obviously didn't see Phil Thompson live, but I've watched a lot of those games. And he was great. I wouldn't put Agar above him, but I would put Agar 10th. I mean, Alex Raisbeck died in 1949. So there's just no way for any of us to know how good he was. There is unlikely to be any... Well, no, there is There is no living Liverpool fan who saw him play. His last career game was in 1914. His last game... For Liverpool was in 1909. Uh, yes, great career for the club, but I just don't know that any of us can really say how good he was. Um, but Agar was incredible. Good list, though. Good list from Henry. On to five things we're looking forward to as Liverpool return from the international break. Speak for yourself, Joanna Durkin. Uh, injuries to ease up, okay. Non-stop football, not so much. Rangers double header. I mean, why would anyone be looking forward to this? Uh, a meeting with City. Again, why are we looking forward to this? Have you seen us play this year? And the first sight of Calvin Ramsey. Um, yeah, I mean, definitely looking forward to seeing Calvin Ramsey. But uh, the meeting with City, I, I, I could probably do it out as things stand. Not really Arsenal playing Rangers, League One level club. So you know, uh, they've got one title to their name in their entire twelve year history. So you know, 
that's what they are. <laughs> I'm just trying to upset people here. Um, right, Liverpool.com then. Liverpool can reap 67 million transfer reward for next five years, but FSG told problem is looming. Oh, this is Queeving Kelleher. So the 67 million transfer reward is obviously Allison. The problem looming would be Queeving and the lack of game time. Look, he's a good keeper. He's he's nothing to lose sleep over. He's the third best young Irish goalkeeper. Gavin Basunu is significantly better. And I think Mark Travers is better as well. Um, he's a good keeper and he will have a good career. But he's nothing for us to lose any sleep over. Liverpool transfer target looks to avoid Harry Kane mistake as FSG should wait to pounce. What is this? Oh, but Kyle Saka. Yes, so Saka's contract is up in 2024. Arsenal are trying to negotiate a new deal. There has been some hints that Saka wants to wait until the summer when he knows if Arsenal have gotten top four uh, before committing to a deal. He is He is sensational. Absolutely sensational. He'd love to have him at Liverpool. He would be a, a, an unbelievable get. My expectation is he stays at Arsenal for quite a while, but if if he holds off and decides to wait, then yeah, maybe, maybe because I could see. I, I definitely, I definitely think they'll finish fifth. I know they've had a good start, but who have they played? They've played all bad teams. Bar United, who are mediocre, and United schooled them. And Arsenal fans will want to fool themselves and claim they're the better team. That's just because they don't know what they're watching. Go and watch that game back. United absolutely schooled them. It was Oli Ball at its best. Uh, prolific ace remains Liverpool transfer dream as 35 million interest Remains a big amid big FSG reinvesting plan. Uh, Robertson to Miss Brighton, Sander Burge still on the radar, doubtful. FSG want multi club model. Oh, it's a Danish attacker, Casper Tengstead, who plays for Rosenberg in Norway. Um, okay. Don't know much about the lad. Don't tend to watch much Norwegian football. Um, it's a winger forward. Eight goals in seven games so far this season. Just moved to Rosenberg this summer. Um, came through the Midtland Academy. Went to Horsens. Didn't really make a breakthrough as a senior player. At, um, until he was 20, which is a bit unusual for Denmark, but oh, you never know. You never know. Maybe one to keep an eye on. Uh, Liverpool should seize on 125 million into Milan Truth as second brutal year gives FSG transfer edge. So Inter have obviously started the season fairly poorly, but the bigger issue for them is that their finances are a bit of a mess, and they're probably going to have to make some big sales. Last year, they posted financial losses of $220 million. That is That was really impressive. Uh, Juve have broken that this year with a loss of $228 million. Uh, Inters came in at $125 million. So you're looking at $345 million in losses over two years. That's that's a concern. And that probably means they're going to have to sell some players. And if we take a look at the Inter Milan squad, there are, I would say, four big money players 
who top clubs would really want. Latura Martinez is the first one. And we saw him linked to Premier League clubs for a while. I think Arsenal and Chelsea were interested. Then you had... Then you have... Um, Alessandro Bastoni, the centre-back, who's as good a young centre-back as there is in the world, 23 years of age. Spurs want him desperately. Conte wants him to come in and play left-side centre-back. Then there's Milan Skriniar. The problem with him is he's out of contract next summer, so they're most likely going to lose him for free. And that's a huge blow for them. And then the final one is Nicolo Barella. <clears throat> and he's the one that would interest Liverpool the most. Uh, 25, he'll be 26 in February, just into his peak years, already established first choice for Italy, 41 caps. He is absolutely outstanding. Tremendous player. He's been at Inter now three seasons, one on loan, from Cagliari, loan with an obligation to buy, and then two seasons permanently, and this is the third season. Um, obviously played a huge role in Inter winning the title, played a huge role in Italy winning the Euros. Just a top, top player. One that I, I think we would all love to see arrive So, yeah, so they've got three players to sell and a, a lot of debt building up. Uh, Bastoni, Martinez and Barella. Now, they might find ways around it, like selling Denzel Dumfries and stuff to some club that would be foolish enough to pay $40 million for a $20 million right back. But I think there's possibly going to be an opportunity to go and get Barella next summer, maybe even in January if their finances are that bad. Liverpool sent transfer reminder by Wonder Kid they missed out on who is like Mohamed Salah. Um, there's not many players like Mohamed Salah. Oh, this is um, Abul Fatawa Isahaku, the young Ghanaian who was heavily linked with us, was linked to Bayer Leverkusen and ended up at Sporting. Um, very, very talented player. Nothing really like Salah at all. Um, Left-footed and quick, but not like Salah at all. Liverpool should already know their next Darwin Nunes transfer, who can be the new Erling Haaland. So this is Benjamin Sesko. If you haven't seen it already, go and look at the goal he just scored for uh, Slovenia against Sweden. Utterly ridiculous goal. Um, the crazy thing is we could buy him and play him with Darwin. That would work in my view. It would be very big and very, very intimidating for defenders to go up against. But they've both played a lot of their football in a front two. And I think the skill sets would mesh quite well. Imagine the amount of, of assists Trent would get with the two of them up front. He might get 30 a season. Assists. Uh, Anfieldindex.com then. Article by Sam Maguire. Is it Bellingham or Bust for Liverpool? Well worth your while giving that one a read. There are two new podcasts up. Under Pressure, Make or Break, Dan Rhodes, Dan Kennett and Simon Brundish taking stock of 13 games in 43 days, which is just a ludicrous amount of football up to the World Cup break. So give that a listen. There's also a scouted for Brighton, myself and Carl having a look at the Seagulls. Um, it was before we found out that Andy Robertson was definitely out, but we did pick Costas to start anyway, so not really make much of a difference and that's it that is me for today folks thank you as always and i will see you tomorrow bye bye we hope you enjoyed listening to this anfield index show please be sure to subscribe to our channel 
so future podcasts find their way to your device automatically. There's nothing quite like fan engagement, and we'd love to know what you think of anything discussed on this show. The best way to get in touch is over on our free Discord community, where both podcasters and listeners debate the hottest LFC topics 24-7. Sign up free now at anfieldindex.com forward slash discord. You won't regret it. You can also follow us on Twitter at Anfield Index and find us on Facebook by searching for Anfield Index. Oh, and before you go, we'd love it if you could leave us a five-star review on your favourite podcast app. It only takes a couple of seconds and it means the world to the people who create these free shows.